<laughs> How do you feel when you see yourself? Um, I mean, I feel like I get like automatically super self-conscious. <laughs> Has that always been the case? Yeah. I was diagnosed with Turner syndrome before I was born. I've had some like mental health things over the years that have been hard. What is Turner syndrome? Turner syndrome is either the complete or partial deletion of one of your X chromosomes. It only affects people who are designated female at birth and have two X chromosomes. I think this is part of social anxiety really is in your head you think you're coming off differently than you actually are so a lot of times I will get very in my head and I'll go back to like my mom or something after a party and be like I can't believe I acted like that like I can't believe I was like so awkward like why'd I say this why'd I do that and she's like what are you talking about you looked fine <laughs> so I mean that definitely is part of it but um yeah, I think I've also, over the years, kind of gotten better at, and this isn't necessarily a good thing, masking what I'm dealing with a little bit more. What did you think when you first heard the words Turner Syndrome? <clears throat> um, a lot of confusion, a uh, lot of uh, mystery. Uh, we had no idea what it was. It mentioned abortion as, as a possibility and you know we said no this is our child and that we um, would not want to do that um, and then he did say well you know go home probably within the next month or so you will have a miscarriage it's about 99% of um, fetuses with Turner syndrome are either miscarried or stillborn. And they think that um, fetuses with Turner syndrome account for about 15% of all miscarriages. I remember lying in bed and feeling Celeste kick and wondering, will this be the last time? Um, and uh, I'm sorry. My family has kind of attached this whole like mythology around my birth that I don't necessarily agree with. Um, the story is like that the doctor offered my parents an abortion because back when I was born um, they knew even less about TS than they do today. You know had I known Celeste in utero, I would have known that it would have happened because they're so spunky and, <laughs> and strong-willed and <laughs> determined and, uh, and stubborn um, that it was going to happen. What is it like to live with a rare genetic syndrome? Um, I think it can feel very lonely. Um, I think it can feel pretty confusing at times and I think it can also be empowering in some ways because you know as much as it has been hard growing up not really seeing you know a face or a body type like mine like every day or being able to talk with someone who understood exactly what I was going through um, it kind of made me proud to be unique and it made me I think care a whole lot less <laughs> about like fitting in or worrying what other people think because it's I don't know I mean I've just kind of gotten to the point in my life I guess where I'm old enough that I embrace it. If somebody wants to be your friend, what should they do? Just come up and say hi. <laughs> yeah, it's really that simple. I'm, I'm always down for a new friend. How does TS impact you? Um, well, it kind of depends. Like, the physical symptoms are that I'm shorter in stature, 
um, I have like broader shoulders, a wider neck, my eyes kind of like turn down at the ends a little bit. I know like one of the first things people notice a lot of times is my height, but... How tall are you? I'm 4'11 and 3 quarters. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, TS also comes with a lot of times some learning issues and some mental health issues, both of which I have had. What did you think when your parents told you that you didn't have that X chromosome for the first time? I was, um, I didn't completely understand what it meant for my life, to be honest. I was just kind of like, okay, cool. When I was really little, I didn't really understand <laughs> that anything was different about me at all. I knew I was like short, but I didn't, like if you had taken me to like a sleepover, which I wouldn't have gone to because I was terrified of those, um, I would have looked at the other kid and been like, so where's your growth hormone injection? Like, don't you get one too? Like, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> As I've gotten older, I also kind of wish they had told me sooner. Um, because I feel like Seven was a little old to not, like, entirely understand what was going on with me. It definitely made me question when I was younger, like, well, what does this mean for me, like, biologically? Like, if I only have one X chromosome, like, what does that make me? <laughs> what do you view yourself as? So... Back then, I kind of had this viewpoint, which is the viewpoint of a lot of people with Turner Syndrome, like, oh, that doesn't make me any less of a woman, like, just because you only have, like, one X chromosome or, like, can't have kids, like, there's nothing less female or less feminine about that. But as I got older and, like, <laughs> I met more LGBT people, I was like, there might be something a little bit more here. A lot of people who I've met with TS are actually like quite feminine and very happy identifying as female. Um, but if you look up the definition of intersex, Turner syndrome is actually technically an intersex condition. And I grew up kind of like wondering about that like that was a question I asked when I was really little to my mom was like well if I don't have one X chromosome does that make me like a boy or a girl like what does that mean because girls have XX and boys have XY so then what am I? Can you tell me a bit about the importance of pronouns? Sure. When I hear someone use she her that can kind of trigger dysphoria because it's not how I view myself, if that makes sense. How do you view yourself? Uh, I identify as non-binary, so I don't identify 100% as a boy or 100% as a girl. I feel most comfortable um, kind of using they, them pronouns. If somebody unintentionally uses the incorrect pronoun, will you be offended? Nope. I honestly, I think probably the worst thing to do in that situation is to like freak out and apologize and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so, so sorry and make like a big deal out of it. Like assuming the person's doing it unintentionally, just correct yourself and just like move on with the conversation. That's kind of what I want people to understand about me is just because there are some things about me that you might not understand or might be a little bit different. Doesn't mean that we can't connect. <laughs> what was it like for you when Celeste was going through the height of their mental health struggles? That, um, that it was another challenge. That we worked on trying to find solutions and that we worked together as a team and that there were a lot of hard things going on and some things that we didn't understand but we just kept plugging at it i don't mind if you are more specific by the way oh <laughs> okay 
I think he's just, he's not sure what he's allowed to say. <laughs> I started drinking uh, around 15, 16, and the first time I ever did drugs, I was 17. What we thought were anxiety and depression only. Uh, we also learned that there was uh, abuse of drugs as well. Were you using to mask something? Yeah, I was definitely trying to numb like the emotions that I was dealing with. What have you learned about the importance of talking about these topics? Well, first off, the, the abuse of drugs um, had reasons to begin, but the continuing, the continuing use of drugs is something that I've learned through going to Naranon and to Al-Anon meetings. Uh, it's, it's an illness. It's a brain imbalance, a chemical imbalance in the brain, and it's, it's something that isn't something that can be cured, but it can be managed. There's um, a saying in like the recovery community that you only have to do it for uh, 24 hours at a time. And that's a really helpful way of looking at it because it doesn't have to be the rest of your life. You just got to get through the day. <laughs> every, every challenge that Celeste has come up against, they've proven that they can do just about anything that they put their mind to. So I see daily growth. And, um, you know, uh, we, we talk about stepping stones a lot. Um, Celeste uses their stepping stones quite well. Each one leads to another one, leads to another, leads to another. Another new challenge. Even if you're nervous about it, you step up and you do it. One of the things that I'm most proud of is the fact that Celeste has worked really hard to be who they are and has really um, been very patient with all of us in, um, you know, in, in supporting us in understanding. And, and helping us to think things through with them. When somebody's finished with this video and they go on about their day, what's the number one thing you hope they learn? I hope they learn that, um, you know, there's people out there with a lot of different types of differences and that it's just a reflection of natural human variation and that it's okay to ask questions, it's okay to be curious, but it's not, you know, scary or weird or anything like that. And it's just, like I said, it's like a beautiful reflection of how different each person can be.